I was looking forward for this moment to share what he was speaking with me. Actually, he started to speak with me when I was on my way to India. I was traveling to India. I was in the airplane, traveling from Newark to New Delhi. It was just like 15 hours traveling, so I had a lot of time to pray, to read the Word of God, and God started to minister my heart with this Word, and the, it's going to be a life change. If you really understand that this Word is going to really change your life, and the, I know that this Word is not just for this moment. All our messages, we record your messages, and later on we, we upload the messages on YouTube. We also have the messages on on all the platforms, all the podcast platform you can see on the Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and they really recommend you to to watch, to hear this message over and over. Because as I say, this message it's gonna really change the way you see your life. It's gonna change the way you see the world, the way you see your job, the way you see a, a, a your partner, your spouse. It's gonna change. The way you see things. Open your Bible with me in Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. And we are going to read it from the verse 11 to the verse 18. Luke chapter 17. And we are going to read it the verse 11. Luke chapter 17 verse 11. If you have the New International Version, I've, I don't know if you have the New International Version there, Google. No? Okay. Okay, I'm reading, I'm reading the New International Version, and it says, Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had lepers met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master! Have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and he thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleanest? Where were the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? In this passage, as it says, like Jesus was traveling as always, and the ten men who had the lepers, the men who had the lepers, they could not approach, he could not come. Uh, near to a person that was clean. So they, they from far, they start to, to call out, or to cry out to Jesus and say, Jesus, please do something for us. And at the distance, Jesus said, Jesus, pay attention. Jesus didn't say, okay, you are healed. Jesus just said, go show yourself to the priests. Because this was mandatory. This was like when the person was cleaning, when the person was healed from lepers, they needed to show up to the, to the priests so the priest could do the ceremony and say that he, they were really healed. So they, start, they, 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 they took the step of faith and they started to walk. And they, on the way, the ten of them, they were healed. And when they saw that they were healed, just one man, just one man came back to Jesus. And with a loud voice, with the, all his heart, he started to praise Jesus and say, I'm healed. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. But Jesus was astonished. Jesus said, there were ten people. Only nine They, they forgot, they, they say what happened, they, they didn't show up, they didn't come back, but only one man, he came back. Thank you. One man came back. From the ten, one man came back. Why is that? The theme of my message is the danger of ingratitude. 
there is a danger to be unthankful. And the people, they don't understand this. And this is something that is, is, is the, in the human being. As we can see here, ten men were healed, but just one man were thankful. Just one man came back. What happened with the other nine? And this is what we see in the world all the time. People today are being less and less content. The people in our days, they are less and less happy. And they cannot see the true blessings of God in our lives. We have so much, we have so much, and, that's, and I think that's the reason that we are so ungrateful, that people are so ungrateful in our days. The word, ingra- uh, uh, the word ingratitude means unappreciative, not displaying gratitude, not giving due return or recompense of for benefits conferred or... For the benefits that they received. So, as I say, the people in our days, they are less and less content. Or they are less, or they are not appreciated. They don't appreciate life. They don't appreciate the people around you. They don't appreciate the job. And what is happening is, is the danger of it being, in, uh, being ungrateful. Or the danger of ingratitude is that the person... Focuses always on the negative. The person that is not happy, or the person that is ungrateful, the person that has this uh, ingratitude life, he always sees life, he always, they are always focusing on the negative. When, when we speak about God, they always see something negative about God. For example, When the angel of the Lord show up to Gideon, when the angel, an angel show up to Gideon and say, man of valor, man of of power, you are a warrior. The first thing he says is, if God is with us, why all these things is happening with me? A A person that is ungrateful. They always see the negative. They can't see positive things. They always see something that is wrong. They see this on God all the time. You talk to the people outside, the people that has this ungrateful heart. They always complain about God. They always complaining, uh, 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 say that the, why is this happening? Why is it if God is God? Why is this happening? They can't see the blessings of God. They, co- they can't see anything positive in their spouse. They, as I say, an ungrateful person always see negative. They are always focusing on negative things. So, uh, like in life, when we, when we have a life and if you have a spouse, well, like you don't see anything positive in the spouses anymore. And the list is long. The list is really long. Like when you see the husband, the wife, like when we, we, we sit with somebody to counseling, the list is long of complaining. Yeah. Only negative things, only negative, negative, negative. Always. It's starting in the morning. Like when they wake up, maybe they spouse, they look at you, the another and say, good morning, baby. <laughs> and another one will say, oh, man. You smell bad. Go brush your teeth. You smell bad. Like you, you always see things negative. Look your face. Look your hair. Like it starts in the morning. Like you see everything negative. And the person like, okay, like I'm going to brush the teeth. And when the person like uh, stand from, from the bed and starts to walk, say, wow, he or she is really fat. Needs to lose some weight. I know this doesn't, this doesn't happen here, right? Just uh, outside. But as I said, the list is long of complaining about their spouses and they don't see anything positive anymore. Everything is negative. It's negative. Everything they do, like it's cooking, it's bad. Uh, The food is bad. Everything is bad. 
Why? Because the heart starts to become ungrateful. If you have a daughter and son, every time you see the daughter and son, you always see something negative. You are, you are good for nothing. You are worthy nothing. Everything is bad about the son and daughter. You don't go well in the school because everything is negative. Or the sons and daughter, when they see the father and mother, and, if he, and the kids in our days, they have, they have too much. Yeah. They have too much. That's the why they're ungrateful. You see a child now, it's uh, five years old, and they already, have, uh, they, 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 they already have a cell phone iPad, tablets, and if you give any cell phone, you say, oh, what is this? I want the iPhone 20, <laughs> right? Even They want the best, like, why? They have so many, so they're ungrateful. So when they see the father and the mother, they're always complaining, say, you are annoying. Uh, like my father, my mother, they're annoying me. They're always scolding me. They only see negative. How about the job? There are people that are complaining about the job all the time. They say, what a, what a crap of job I have. <laughs> my boss is annoying. I hate my colleagues. It's always about complaining. I don't know if you know people like this, but I know a lot. And they'll tell one thing. I don't like to stay around these people. I don't like it. For me, I, I, I can't understand how the people can be so ungrateful in life. How, how can they everything, they can complain or they can focus in always in the negative. How about government? I can't speak about government, right? Everything is negative about government. Everything. Oh, man. When you speak about government, any people in power, they're always corrupted. They're always liars. They're always cheaters, thieves. They are everything but not good, right? We can see anything good that they do. It's always negative. Neighbors, when they see my neighbor, it's always, I say, oh, I hate my neighbor. I hate his dog. He's barking all the time. <laughs> my neighbor makes a lot of noise. Always, always negative. How about friends? You don't have any friends anymore because all the friends disappear from you. Because all your friends, you can't stand them anymore. You see them? Look at their clothes. Oh, how, can, how can they wear this? He doesn't know how to speak. Like, uh, like always we see it negative. And how about church? The negative person or the ungrateful person, better saying, when they, they reach the church, they always... They, they already, they reach and complain. They say, there was nobody in the door today. Nobody greeted me when I arrived. Did you hear the worship? They miss, they miss the tune. They always see something negative. Well, they didn't clear here. They, they, look, it's dirty here. The chairs, they are not in a good position. Always complaining. The sister, the brother... They were supposed to love me. They didn't, they didn't look to me. When, when I was arriving, they gave their back and they turned away and they, they didn't talk to me. The pastor only speaks about money. The pastor is always speaking about prosperity. The pastor, he speaks very hard. He's always speaking like a hard message. He's, the pastor is very radical. No, the pastor he speaks only about grace. Yeah. This, the pastor is, he speaks about a motivational word all the time. You see, there is no way, there is no way to, to, to satisfy or to make the people happy. Because a person, a person that's ungrateful, doesn't matter what you do, they're always seeing something negative. They're always complaining about something in the church. 
When you arrive in your house, you look at your house and say, my house is very ugly. I wish to have a house like Michio and Natalia. <laughs> Their house is very nice. Look at my house, it's ugly. It's dirty. <laughs> Nothing works in this house. Everything is broken. What a crap apartment I live. Really? Like always. It's always something that they are complaining. About the car. My car is old. It's ugly. I'm ashamed of my car. And they forget to see the benefits, to see what you really have in your life. That's why I say if you, if you really understand this message today, you are going to start to see life different. You are going to really change uh, the way you see your life, the way you see your spouse, the way you see your house, the way you see God, the way you see your church. In Numbers, if you go with me in the book of Numbers, chapter 22, in Numbers chapter 22, you know what, I'm not going to read it because I'm not going to have time anyway. But in Numbers chapter 22, from the verse 24 to the verse 31, it starts to tell the story uh, of uh, Balaam. Balaam? Balaam? Is it right? Balaam? Balaam? Okay. So, he's on his way, he's on his way to do something that he was not supposed to do. And he's dunking. He, his dunk, his, his dunk see the angel, and it stop it. So he gets very mad with the dunk, and he starts to beat the dunk, and beat the dunk, and beat the dunk, and he, and he starts to, to say, hey, you are annoying me, I want to kill you. He gets mad with the dunk. In the verse 27 it says, When the dunk saw the angel of the Lord, it lay down under... Balaam, and he was angry, and he beat it with his staff. Then the Lord opened the donkey's mouth, and it said to Balaam, What have I done to you to make you beat me this three times? Balaam answered the donkey. Look what weird, right? The man talking to an animal. Balaam answered the donkey. You have made me a fool of me. If you only had if only I had a sword in my hand, I would kill you right now. The donkey said to, to Balaam, Am I not your own donkey, which you have always ridden to this day? Have I been in the habit of doing this to you? No, he said. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eye, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with his sword drawn. So he bowed low and fell face down. Anyway, what I want to take from this passage is, in one moment that the donkey made something wrong, it was everything for Balaam to be ungrateful and say, if I had a sword, I would kill you. A person, a person that is ungrateful, you can do everything right all your life. They are only going to see the negative when you, see, when you do something wrong. Your spouse can do everything right for you. But when they do something wrong, you're going to point your finger. You're going to say, I'm going to divorce you. I'm going to destroy you. I hate you. I don't like you. God can do everything for you, but if something doesn't go well in your life, you are starting to say, I'm not going to church anymore. I'm not going to serve God anymore. I hate God. Why? Ungratefulness. And there is a danger to be ungrateful. The people, they often forget the good the Lord has done or the good that the people are doing for you. They're so easy to forget. Like the passage of Balaam here, he forgot it very easily. Like it was fast. He forgot very fast what the donkey did for him all his life. Why? Ungratefulness. But let me say one thing for you. The things 
you take it for granted, I can assure you that somebody is praying for it. Somebody is praying for something that you have in your life that you are ungrateful right now. I spoke of my experience in Cuba. I, you know the experiences in India, like the people, they don't have anything. And we have everything and we are still complaining. We are still ungrateful. We still have a heart of ingratitude. In 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2, it says, People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy. So the Apostle Paul is saying for Timothy here, you know what? There, there's going to be a time and the people, they're going to be so selfish. They're going to so be so lovers of themselves. And they're going to be ungrateful. They're, they're not going to be thankful for what they have in their lives. But what happened when we have this attitude? What happened when we have this, this, this type of this heart? In Proverbs chapter 17 verse 13. Proverbs chapter 17 verse 13 says. He who returns evil for good. Evil will not depart from his house. This is a strong word. A person that is ungrateful, that always returning return evil for the good that the people are doing. It's returning evil for what, good are, what God is doing for them, what the people are doing for them. It says in this verse that the evil will not depart from his house. What I see, and I can see through, throughout the Bible, and I see in the people, and we minister to the people, and I talk to the people, and I see people, I see that the people, they have the tendency to be more thankful, and the more appreciated for people, for those who doesn't deserve, for the people that they really deserve. If, if, the, if the people, like, treats you bad... Usually the people, they're more thankful for these people than instead of for the people that is treating you well all the time. I don't know if it's something in the heart of the human being that they want to be not appreciated, but they want to be welcome or they want the people uh, to like them. And sometimes they're more, they're more thankful or they're, they have more gratitude to the people that doesn't deserve instead to the people that it deserves. I'm not going to read this passage again because the, the time is running fast. But in Exodus chapter 32, you can read it later in your house. Exodus chapter 32, verse 1 to 4. The people of Israel was delivered from... The people of Israel, they were delivered in, with the powerful hands of God from Egypt. God made several miracles... Moses was there with the people all the time. He's standing with the people. And he, in one short moment, in a short moment, Moses was in the mountain. Moses was praying. The people looked around. And the people looked to Aaron and say, you know, Aaron, what I'm saying here is in this story. Exodus chapter 32. They looked to Aaron and say, Aaron, we don't know what happened with this Moses. This fellow Moses, like... Uh, this guy, we don't know what happened with him. Maybe he died and we even don't care about him. And uh, you know what? We don't know who is, who is our God too. So why you don't make gods for us? So Aaron asked, okay, bring me all your gold. They start to bring all gold for Aaron. So Aaron 
made a, a statue, made a, a calf. And Aaron said to, the, to them, people of Israel, this is your God. This is the God that delivered you from Egypt. How can, they, how can these people forget God so fast? How, can, how could they like say, you know what, God, you don't deserve it. Moses doesn't deserve him to, uh, for us to be thankful. This God is here deserve it. This is something that, you, like as I said, it's in the heart of the human being. The problem is when you become ungrateful, the people that are ungrateful, they become bitter, unhappy, and they re they they really missing or they they miss the real purpose or they they miss the real mean of life and the people around them. You do not only miss the blessings, the favor, and the protection of the Lord, but you lost it. You also start to have many uh, emotional sickness. All these people that they are ungrateful, they have several emotional sickness. These people, they, they start or they, they have depression, anxiety, and, and, anxiety. Huh? anxiety. Thank you. Anxiety, anger. When we talk about the depression, oh, you know, like uh, uh, they started to, the mood always changed very easy. They lost of interest, of pleasure in activities that once they enjoyed. They ch uh, changed their appetites. They start to, or to lose a lot of weight or they start to gain weight. Trouble is sleeping or is sleeping too much. Loss of energy, increasing uh, 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 the, the purposeless of, uh, of physical activities, like they don't feel to do anything. They feel wordless, guilt, difficulty thinking, concentration, making decisions. They start having thoughts of death, suicide. Why? Because they're ungrateful. They can see the things that God is doing for them. They can see what the people are doing for them. The only thing that they can focus is, is the negative. So that is the why they start to feel depressed. As I say, it's not that they, they only miss the blessings of the Lord. They start to have emotional sickness. They start to have anxiety. They, they, they become irritable or they become anger anger of everything they they become very fast like uh impatient it's everything annoying them like you can you can't even talk to anything that the people say hey stop it i don't know you if you are here with me are you understand what i'm saying when you have an ungrateful heart, you don't only miss the blessings, the protection, the favor of the Lord, but you start to have a lot of uh, emotional sickness. Why, why the people are depressed? If you talk to them, it's because everything they see is negative. Everything they see in life is wrong. And they say, why should I live? My marriage, it's horrible. Everything I do, I can't do anything right. Everything is wrong in their life. So then they start to have this kind of thought, say, it's better for me to, to kill myself. Why should I live? Or they have anxiety, everything like it gets explosive or... or, or irritable or angry uh, they don't have patience anymore they don't have any patience with the spouses with the kids in the jobs anywhere like it, everything is is stressed for them they start to lose the uh, um, concent concentration the memory started not to work properly anymore Compu compulsive behavior So let me ask a question for you. Do you want to have this kind of life? Mm -hmm. 
Do you think that God created you to live in this condition? To live in depression, to live in anxiety, to live in angry, to live in... Do you think God created you for this? No, of course not. So how can I have, how can you have a good life? It's very easy. Gratitude. Thankfulness. Look to the person next to you and say, gratitude. If you want to have a good life, if you want to see life different, it started to be grateful, it starts to be thankful. You need to learn how to enjoy your life, the people around you, and especially God. You need to be appreciative. As I say, God started to speak with me this word when I was traveling from Newark to New Delhi. I started to think everything around me. I started to think in my family. I started to think in God. I started to think in my church. I started to think everything. And I don't have an ungrateful heart. I'm really thankful for everything God, God has given me. And the, really, I'm thankful. My family knows that. I'm thankful. But I start even to see, I start to, or, or I say, I can be better. I can be more thankful. I can show more gratitude for the people around me. Because it's not just to be thankful, like say, I'm thankful. But to show the gratitude for the people around you. To show the gratitude to God, like to wake up in the morning and say, God, thank you. Thank you for this morning. Thank you because I'm alive. Thank you for my family. As I say, we take for granted what we have. We have a lot. And I can, I, I, I can assure you that you have things that you don't even need it. And you have it. So we have so many things to be grateful in our, in, in our life. And if we understand this message, and from now on, I start to see life different. Instead of to focus on the negative, and you start to see the positive. You start to see everything that God is doing for me. So we will see the life different. The life will, be, will, will change around us. So if I want to have a good life, I need to be thankful. I need to be grateful. As I say, we need to learn to enjoy the life. We need to enjoy, uh, to learn how to enjoy the people around us. We need to remember, remember and remember the goodness. We need to remember the blessings. Again, stop focusing the negative and start remembering the good. So if the depression starts to want to take you or start to come into your mind, focus or change your mind, change the way you think and start remembering the goodness, start remembering the blessings that you have in your life. Remember, remember and remember. Remember. And this is what I started doing this when I was traveling. I start remembering like everything that I passed it through. I start to remember like places that I took that I took in my family, my wife, my daughter, my son, newborn son, and they say I I could not believe that they put them in this kind of hotel. When we were traveling, my son was three months old. We were like, our mind was blowing, like everything was... We lived in India for two years without leaving the country. It was tough. The spiritual world in India, it's very strong. Like everything, like I was... And they said, we need to travel, we need to go out. We didn't have much money. So we traveled for two days by bus. From Varanasi to Kathmandu, Nepal. Two day by bus. My son, three months old, and Natalia was four years old. And I remember like on the border from, from India to Nepal, there was no hotel. And we need to spend the night. And the hotel that they say, say, I can't believe it. That my wife and my kids is staying in this situation. So why am I remembering that? I'm not remembering the bad things. Because I know we didn't have money. It's not that, oh, I have money. I could... No, we didn't have money. 
I remember him say, my wife never complained. My wife never complained. My kids, they're good kids. They, they, they're grown now. They never complained about life. They say, oh, you put me in that kind of hotel. You, le- you, 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 you made us live in India. You made us live in that place. They never complained. So I remember the goodness. I remember what they see. I'm thankful for my wife. I'm thankful for my kids. So we need to start to remembering the goodness. We need to start remembering the blessings. So we can be more appreciative. So I can be more appreciative to my wife. I can be more appreciative to my kids. I can be more appreciative to God. You know what? Because even all this situation could say, Oh, God could bless me. I could have more money. You know what? God always protected us. God always was with us. I don't have anything to complain. First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 16 and verse to the verse 18. First Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18 says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. What it says here, be thankful. Be grateful, always rejoice, rejoice in your life, rejoice always. Stop to see negatives and rejoice always. Give you thanks in all circumstances. Be grateful in all circumstances. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 20 says, Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Always giving thanks to the Lord. Pastor, you don't know what's happening. I'm passing through a bad situation. You don't know. You, 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 you don't understand me. Oh, I can understand you. I have passed through so many situations. And I can, I can understand you. And I can say you. Give thanks in all circumstances. Be thankful. How can, be, how can I be thankful in my sickness? Be thankful you are still alive. Be thankful. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 and 7 says. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayers and petition, with the thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understand, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You see, when we have a thankful heart, God will guard our minds. God will guard our hearts for not to have this emotional sick, to, be un- uh, un- uh, to have the, uh, this anxiety, to have this un- uh, depression, to have the, any kind of emotional sick. God will guard our minds and hearts. But we need to be thankful. Look to the person next to you again and say, be thankful. Psalms chapter 9 verse 1 says, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. So what did David, what did the psalmist is saying here? I'm not only, I'm not just going to give you thanks for everything, but I will tell. I will remember the goods. I will remember the wonderful deeds. I will remember everything you did for me. You know, David passed through very bad situations. David was running from the enemy all the time. Saul was trying to kill him, but he is saying, you know what? Give it thanks. I will give it thanks to you, Lord. With all my heart, I will tell Of all your wonderful deeds. Again, remember, remember, and remember. Start to appreciate and be thankful and be grateful. Start to see the qualities of the people around you. Start to be thankful to God for everything He's doing for you. There is 
No word for me to express my gratitude for the Lord. Every day, every morning, I say to the Lord, I love you. I thank you. I love you. I know from where He took me. I know where I was. And I know what He's doing in my life. We need to learn to remember, to appreciate, to be thankful. Again, starting with God. Be thankful to God. Even when you, you don't see, even when you don't feel like it says in the, in the song that we sang, He's working. He's in our side. He's helping us. Maybe you don't see, but He is helping you. He's protecting you. Maybe you don't know, but a lot of things may be happening around you. That God delivered you and you don't even know. I remember one time my wife woke up and she said, I had a dream. And in this dream we were walking and one car drove, uh, uh, run over us and we died. Okay? We just pray. We gave thanks to the Lord and said, Lord, we declare your protection over us. We forgot the dream. That day we start walking in, in the street. We are walking together. And we always walk in one side of the road. And they say, okay, you know what, let's walk in this side. After a few seconds that we are walking. And this was like 11 o'clock in the morning. There was no many cars in the road where we live. It's, it's very peaceful. So... After a few seconds that we were walking, one car came, lost the direction, and ran over one house in the same place that we usually walk. That we could see. But how many times God protected us from things that we could not see? We need to be thankful. Thankful for our life, for our job, for everything that God is giving to us. You start to be thankful for your spouse. Remember, stop, stop seeing the negative. Stop seeing the things that you don't like. And you start to appreciate, for example. Again, I remember, I start to see everything that my wife did. It. How cannot you be appreciated for her? How cannot you appreciate her? Better saying. I needed to appreciate it. So... The way I see her now is different. And I don't know if she remembers or not. But when I arrived in India, I sent a text message to her saying, I thank you. I appreciated you. Because we start to see life different. I don't see if she is waking up with the smelling and saying, go to brush her teeth. <laughs> and your hair, her hair like this, no? She, she wake up like her hair is already brushed, like with makeup. She wake up like this. No, 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 no. So we start to appreciate. We start, I start to appreciate my daughter, my son. I appreciate what they do. We don't have anything to complain about our kids. They are good kids. Of course, there are things that we need to keep. Hey, all right, but they are good kids. We need to see the good that they're doing, the, the things that they are doing, like the kids to start to appreciate the father and the mother, the hard work that they do to give the things. Appreciate the job. Maybe you don't like the job, but this is what you have. This is what is bringing the income to your house. So be appreciative. Start to thank for the job because there are people that they, they have no job. There are people that have no money. So when you have a job, so be thankful for your job. Be thankful for the government, even if you don't like it. Be thankful. Especially the government that you have now. I don't understand how some Christians, they don't like the government or the administration that we have now. But we need to be so thankful for the administration that we have now. Because the administration that we have right now... We can start, you can, your kids can pray in your school, can, can, can preach in their school. They are not forbidding anymore. Yeah. So we need to be thankful. 
Be thankful for the neighborhood that we, uh, the neighborhood that we live. Be thankful for the friends. Be thankful for the church that you are. Be thankful for your house. Be thankful for your car. Maybe you don't like your car. Maybe you hate your car. Maybe it's an ugly car. But this car is like the donkey of Balaam. It's taking you everywhere. So be thankful for your car. Be thankful for your house. Maybe it's not the house of your dreams, but it's, it's the shelter that you have. It's the house that is giving protection from the, from the cold, from the sun. It's the house that you can sleep well. So be thankful for the things that you have. So when you, when you start having, we start to, to, to see life with a an appreciated heart with a grateful heart, I can guarantee you, your life is going to be so good from now on. It's going to be so good because you'll start to see life different. Stand up in your feet.